Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you from Mossy Creek Fly Fishing with your fly fishing forecast. The date for today is Monday, the 12th of June. So, uh, we've got a little bit of rain happening outside. It's not a lot, but it's something. Um, there's some showers and storms. There's a front pushing through today. So we're getting some really, really much needed rain. Um, everything's pretty brown here in the valley. Um, farmers are starting to pump and irrigate uh, the crops. Um, so it looks like we're just in a typical kind of droughty summer, late spring, early summer. Um, so here's the deal for, for where to go fishing. This is, this is the times where people start to kind of get stacked up a little bit and it's our job to kind of spread people out and make sure that, um, when they're heading out to go fish, they've got, you know, good, good water to be on. So we'll start with the brook trout streams. Um, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but the good news is um, it's been nice and cool. In fact, that's gonna continue through the, at least the first half this week. Daytime, daytime highs here in June in the mid 70s and lows in the 40s and upper 50s. It's very cool, it's been cool for weeks. So water temperatures are not an issue. Um, food is not an issue. There's still tons of bugs in the mountains. There's still some drakes. There's yellow sallies all over the place. There's ants and terrestrials starting to show up everywhere. Um, there's caddis. Uh, th there's all kinds of food for the brook trout. And then, like I said, the water temperatures are good. It's just everything is extremely low. All right. Um, so if you've got a favorite drainage that holds water well um, and you like getting in your camouflage and getting down low and crouching behind rocks and dapping over top of logs. Um, you can go brook trout fishing. You can be successful if you find the right spots where the water's moving. Um, I, I don't know about the rest of the state, but it looks like today we're only supposed to get a tenth of an inch to maybe a quarter of an inch. They said higher amounts and some thunderstorms, so hopefully we get a couple storms rolling through to dump some rain. Um, so if your brook trout streams uh, near you are a little skinny, and you kind of want to lay off of them until we get some more water in the system. That makes perfect sense. This is the time of year where a lot of people will start to switch over to bass anyway, okay? We're only about a week, week and a half away from the solstice, so longest day of the year is coming up. Uh, we haven't had any real big heat waves or anything yet, uh, but the bass fishing has been hot, all right? So uh, in addition to our larger rivers, the Shenandoah, the James, um, the New, the Potomac, all those streams we fishing quite well in spite of the fact that they're lower than average. These are big watersheds, um, huge long pools. So the fishing's been quite good. Um, our water levels right now are what they would ordinarily be um, at about uh, Labor Day weekend. So floatable, fishable, um, lots of good top water action, having a lot of fun. Don't forget all your lakes and impoundments, okay? So the bass fishing's been awesome to our west here in the George Washington National Forest. Um, almost every single drainage um, through, you know, Rockingham, Augusta, Rockbridge, right on down the line, <clears throat> almost every single one of them is dammed. So we've got great lakes like uh, Switzer Reservoir and Elkhorn Lake and Todd Lake and Hone Quarry and Briar Branch and the list goes on and on. So there's all kinds of great lakes to go fish. The sunfish bite is awesome. Uh, they're coming off their spawns. They're eating like crazy. If you got kids, get out there and take them after sunfish. Um, the the uh, bass bites in the lakes are good. Uh, and then it's, it's really, really good on the river. Okay, I, I had my kids out on the river last week and man, they had, they had a ball. They were out there crushing and catching them every which way. So uh, top water has been really big. Uh, load up on your cork bugs, on your popping bugs. Uh, chartreuse is an important color. Um, blacks and olives are good. Yellow is really important. Um, <clears throat> blue is always a good color. Our damselflies and our dragonflies have started hatching like crazy. So just in the last week, I've seen a huge explosion in the bugs flying over the water. You're seeing a lot more bass jump out of the water and grab their food. So that's a good sign that the fish are starting to kind of feed on the surface and tune into the bugs. Haven't heard any dog day cicadas yet, but I imagine we'll start hearing them fire up here in the next week or so. Um, traffic on the rivers has been pretty good, not too crazy. Um, and um, so for you trout fishermen that want to just keep on, keep on trout fishing, um, that's cool. You need to go find some streams that are more stable, like spring creeks like Mossy Creek. So it's not that, it's not that Mossy doesn't get low, 
it's just low for creeks like that is a few inches low and clear. So the fish are a little bit more skittish. Um, still plenty of cover. This time of year on our spring creeks, if they're a true spring creek like Mossy Creek, um, the fish actually get more and more cover um, as we go through the summer. It's kind of the opposite of freestone streams. Freestone streams, as the water level drops, the fish get exposed, they get more skittish, they're getting picked on more by birds and everything eats trout, you know, uh, the otters, the osprey, uh, the kingfishers, the eastern water snake. Um, but creeks like Mossy Creek and Smith Creek and some of our other spring creeks that have a lot of aquatic vegetation, the vegetation grows up like crazy along the banks as well as in the stream itself. And so streams like Mossy Creek actually provide a lot more cover for the trout as we go through the summer. Now, unfortunately, that same cover is what makes you get hung up a lot and caught up a lot. Um, and it makes it more difficult to kind of navigate with nymphs and things like that. But hey, you just got to fish better. You know, you got to get good at it. Fish stuff that's just strong enough to get you back out of those weeds, okay? Um, you'll learn the breaking strength of all the vegetations along these creeks. If you do it long enough, you'll know whether you're getting your fly back right away. Um, on the spring creeks, there are still some drakes around in the evening. Um, the trico hatches are going to become more and more important because we're going to start losing those big, you know, meaty bugs every single night. The fish get used to seeing those every single night. That dries up by about the second or third week in June. And when that happens, those little size 18 and 20 trichos hitting the water at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning become much, much more important. So we're gonna have this little moment where we've lost most of our mayflies, but we've got these trichos and the terrestrials haven't really set in in big numbers yet. And um, I know a lot of people hear that and they say, I don't want anything to do with the trico, they're too hard to fish. You don't typically have to fish the trico itself, okay? The beauty of small bugs in great numbers is it gets fish up in the water column. Um, they can't swim four feet up to eat a size 20 and go back down and actually like gain energy. They're burning calories at that point. So what they have to do is they have to post up just under the surface and get on a feeding rhythm, a two second cycle, a five second cycle, a 10 second cycle. It's uh, the most efficient way for them to eat, but it also allows you as the angler to spot them identify them and really time it with that rhythm. Um, I typically start off with something bigger that I can see really well, like a little PMX or an ant or a beetle or something like that, and let that come right down through the drift. So use the trico spinner fall to get the fish up in the water column and feeding. Um, for those of you who don't, who aren't able to thread a size 20 hook or doesn't want to fish six or seven X, don't think of it in terms of fishing these small flies. Think of it as using the small flies as an opportunity for you to fish, to a rising fish, to sight fish, okay? So spring creeks have been pretty fun if you're a technical angler. Again, stealthy approaches, really important, especially on spring creeks. Sometimes you're standing six, seven feet up on a high bank, okay? And the fish are just looking right up at you. To get down, take a knee, take longer rods. I have a lot of people that show up on these spring creek trips with, you know, seven foot six, three weights and four weights. Those don't help you at all, okay? Um, they're, they're, they're difficult. Um, you need to be able to have a longer stick. Um, some of the 10 foot three weight guys do a lot better because they can just get up over those moss beds and um, keep their rod high while staying low, all right? So watch your approach. Don't be afraid to fish longer leaders, okay? On the spring creeks, we're fishing these trico hatches uh, and under these conditions, it's not uncommon for us to guide with 10, 11, and 12 foot leaders. As long as it's balanced properly with the fly, that's what you have to do. You gotta keep that fly line way back away from them. Uh, a yellow line just drifting over a fish when it's spooky can put, can put them down. Um, okay, so kind of to recap, brook trap fishing. If you've got decent pools, decent flow in your neck of the woods, um, it's not hot, they're not super stressed out. In fact, they're just easy to spook and easy to scare. So get out there and enjoy them if you can. If your creeks are too low and you're just scaring more than you're catching, give it some time. Um, you know, a little bit of rain here today, Looks like maybe some more weather coming in on the weekend. Uh, we just need two or three big one inch storms and those things are gonna fill right back up. Maybe not for, for weeks, but they'll fill right back up and those brook trout will be on the hunt. Um, get out there and enjoy some bass fishing. It is awesome. Um, call a shop if you need to know floats. Um, call a shop if you need wading access points. Okay, this is what we excel at. We get you guys out there, spread you out, put you on some really good water. Um, so stop in and see us. Uh, one more update. We're really excited this weekend. We, we had a great time at Devil's Backbone uh, yesterday. Had a good event down there. Um, we're going to be heading to a really big event this weekend in Richmond. 
Um, so for those of you who are in and around Richmond and know about Hardywood, West Creek, um, the west side of town, awesome venue. It's one of their biggest days of the year, Father's Day. They got like an oyster festival going on. They'll have live music and then they'll have us there. They'll have Mossy Creek there. We'll have the fly fishing truck. Um, we'll have folks there teaching casting. If you want to, it's Father's Day, okay? Beer and fishing. It's what your father or your husband wants to do, all right? Try and get to Hardywood. We'll be there. Free casting. We'll tune up your cast. That's what we've been doing a lot of. Folks come and say, hey, I need some help. I'm struggling a little bit. You know, I'm on the, I'm on the YouTube and, and uh, it's helping me some, but I need some corrections. And we're there to help you and get your cast dialed up or ask, answer any questions fishing. Um, if you're coming to Hardywood, the truck has everything except for fly tying. Everything. We can spool reels, bring your spools. I mean, bring your reels in and we'll re-spool you. Um, so we hope to see everybody there. That's on Sunday, on Father's Day. Um, all right. I think that's it. We'll talk to you all next week.